This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. Hello everyone, this is Dimitri with Harakonux and Fantex certainly knows how to impress within the current chassis market. That's turning out to be quite challenging given how many outstanding offerings we have available. And you can check out our top cases of 2014 video here. But this latest introduction is a solid proof that innovation still exists uh, when it comes to internal layouts. So this is the Fantex Anthu Mini XL. Priced at $180, this mid tower is meant to challenge how we think of dual systems systems inside a single case. It looks like every other N2 series case with the dual window side panel to reveal the build inside, plus the Fantex logo through the smaller panel that looks fantastic. The only problem that I've discovered and I'm very disappointed to report this is how easy it is to scratch the side panels. You have to be very careful and these are the battle marks uh, after a light nail rub. So case manufacturers should not ignore quality of side panels as that detracts from the overall outstanding build quality of the Mini XL. We have three five and a quarter inch base at the front with sandblasted aluminum facade all the way at the front and the top as well that sparkles slightly and does require some wiping after handling. Now this isn't your standard boxy case as we've got some curvature at the bottom right side that looks unique and as you can see that awesome lighting strip running all the way down on the right side and the top that gives a fantastic character to the Mini XL. The power button acts as a perfect unification spot for the top and bottom LEDs and the lighting strip is very thin and it's defined. It's not blinding in any way but instead gives the case that futuristic look with subtle lighting. The top IO includes audio jacks, a reset button, only two USB 3 ports, uh, come on, uh, we want to see at least four for the price and the caliber of the chassis. And then there's the magical button for color shifting. I really appreciate the diversity we have here with color. We have orange, purple, light blue, teal, dark blue, pink, dark red, green, another purple, yellow, and back to orange. So plenty of colors to uh, fit with any color-coded build, and that's really good to see. So the front intake portion here looks fairly closed off, but with enough spacing and ventilation around for adequate airflow, with easily removable dust filters from the side, nice, very convenient. Plus the bottom of the chassis is also fully dustproof, with filters removed from the side as well. So you don't need to reach from the back and deal with any uncomfortable case orientation. Behind the front panel, two 140mm fans are included to deliver enough intake, while the top handles exhaust very well with the large dustproof cover that's easily removable as well, behind which we find triple 120 and 140mm fan mounts with their respective radiator sizes. Fans can be installed above the frame for push-pull no problem, and cutouts are available for direct routing behind the motherboard. Now on the second side panel we have ventilation spot for extra fans near the front and new power supply vents, uh, both of which are covered with a magnetic dust filter and the side panels open like car doors. Uh, the only supporting hinge is at the front that makes uh, closing them easier and the same goes for the windowed side panel. Uh, no need to align anything, just uh, close the panel like you would with a car door. There's plenty happening at the back, first starting with the rotated ATX power supply installation that saves on the width of the case. Then we have a dual fan bracket for 120 and 140mm fans for exhaust uh, with flexible mounting strips and since this is a micro ATX case, we have uh, 5 expansion slots. And finally, with the exterior out of the way, let's find out what makes the Mini XL so unique. Now you're probably wondering why in the world Fantex would choose a micro ATX form factor given how much room there is left up top. For cooling I've installed a 280mm radiator at the top and based on the height clearance all the water cooling enthusiasts with really thick radiators would be really happy to see such potential. With the radiator so high up you can still utilize the rear fan slot for another 280mm radiator for example. So the Mini XL brings water cooling to another level. For the micro ATX board we've got excellent cable routing holes, they are all grommeted uh, underneath for all the little stuff from the I.O above for the 8-pin 
and the side cutout for proper routing of that 24 pin cable. The floor can support dual 120 and 140mm fans and they are spaced out to not interfere with those bottom cables. And this chamber separation is kind of a staple for Fantex, allowing for easier workflow. We've got 28cm for GPU clearance until we hit the drive cage and obviously more with it removed and I really love the modularity element of all Fantex cases, but for this one in particular. So each cage is removable, it can be installed independently of one another and holds three drives each. The drive caddies utilize these wing designs to secure a mechanical drive without the need to flex it and it also has a centered SSD mount. And speaking of SSDs, a perfect spot to stash away a few of those would be right behind the motherboard with easy routing. Uh, there are two drop and lock brackets that are included that can be relocated inside but would introduce a little bit extra challenge for wiring. We've got a PWM fan hub that's really good to see for full control of the fan speed and overall cable management is absolutely a breeze to handle. Fantex Velcro straps are of course present that you can extend for thicker cables. The spacing in the bottom to tuck away any cables is large enough. The power supply has plenty of room and even Velcro straps on the ceiling. So making sure your cables are fully under control is almost an expectation with the Mini XL. There's no excuse for not doing a clean job. There are a few accessories included with the Mini XL. First, the side fan radiator bracket, a pump bracket with rubber padding and a reservoir bracket. So Fantex is really thinking about the water coolers here. There's also a detailed and helpful manual and a little toolbox with all the screws to simplify the assembly. The side fan bracket can actually be installed with both drive cages in place and I've checked to make sure there was no clearance problems with wiring so it can still populate dual 120mm fans for extra airflow with both cages in position. The reservoir plate is installed facing the inside with many holes available to diversify compatibility and the most unique modular element of the Mini XL is the dual system config. Now the Mini ITX kit is actually sold separately but uh, it includes a motherboard tray, a 5.25 inch IO front panel and a supporting rear case plate that you must exchange with the default one. Uh, it's a fairly simple process, remove the screws, install the new panel and you can move on to the rest of the assembly. Next is mounting in the motherboard tray with just a few screws. The front I.O. panel includes dual USB 3, audio jacks and PR buttons that mounts in one of the 5.25 inch drive bays and it sits flush right against the body without any protrusions. There is a compromise here though and that's the SFX power supply mount on the side in front of the GPU. Given our specific build, I am unable to mount the X61 cooler on the floor, so you either have to opt in for a CPU cooler uh, or get rid of all the drive cages for installation of the cooler at the front. Also, the ITX rear panel only supports a 120mm fan that is really close to the GPU above, so 120mm all-in-one coolers are out of question. The second problem I encountered was actually the length of the cables on my SFX power supply. They are intentionally short and made for really small enclosures, so there's really no way for them to reach the ITX system above. I mean, you could use the bottom power supply to power the micro ATX system and the ATX power supply for the top mini ITX system. But another workaround is if Fantex also included extensions that would solve for this pretty major drawback. The third limitation to keep in mind with the ITX motherboard in place are 140mm fans at the top are no longer supported because the motherboard tray prevents clearance. Uh, 120mm fans are fine. And lastly, the fourth thing to consider if you have long enough cables is actual cable management. There's only one rubber grommet on the side and a couple of smaller cutouts above, but that would still make for some challenging wiring. Long GPUs are fine and dandy, but keep in mind how it covers the top portion of the micro ATX motherboard. And overall, this system isn't perfect, but it's such an awesome attempt that with right components and uh, taking all the challenges into account, it really opens up this awesome opportunity for dual system builds in an efficient layout. Uh, my main concern would be finding that SFX power supply with long enough cables for routing as the rest can be handled quite well. A few things to mention before we conclude is how structurally modular the chassis is. You can disassemble the entire frame. 
Uh, you can remove the five and a quarter inch base, the piece in front of the drive cage, the top cover, and of course the rear cover uh, for painting or modding as everything is held in with screws and Fantex is still one of the only companies that does this. So huge thumbs up for this implementation. You can also purchase one or two meter LED strips uh, that can be linked up to the connectors inside the case. And it follows the same color as the built-in lighting for additional illumination of the interior. You can also get a, a spare drive bracket for three and a half and two and a half inch drives that is installed in different spots inside the case, away from any water cooling parts that you might install if you do decide to remove the entire drive cage, for example. And Fantex is once again in the spotlight for this uh, latest release that is totally unique and incorporates so many pleasant features like the lighting customization, full dustproof design, outstanding airflow and water cooling abilities. The modularity aspect is certainly a huge positive along with the fan hub, uh, excellent cable management system, dual SSD brackets and of course the dual system design to incorporate both micro ATX and mini ITX motherboards. It's just such a pleasure to work with the mini XL and that is extremely easy to recommend. A couple of things I'd love to improve though would be a more scratch resistant side panel window and perhaps a new and a more convenient secondary power supply spot for easier assembly process if you choose the dual system route. However, without a doubt, Fantex has a damn innovative case on their hands that should entice, hopefully, <laughs> fresh innovation within the case market and allow similar outside the box thinking for the rest of the competition. But let us know what you think of the Mini XL with the comment below. You know, does this dual system design excite you in any way? And what type of build would you proceed with? We'd love to hear what the community has to say about this direction. So this concludes this review. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content. Give us a like if you found this review helpful and we'll see you in the next one.